Well, over the uh, next uh, three weeks, uh, do uh, buy this book. It's an excellent book. It's by uh, Greg uh, Gilbert, that book there. Get it uh, online. And uh, we are going to look at, at the book, and it's called What's the Gospel? And as we do this, in the book, I'm going to cover uh, three chapters to look at different aspects of the gospel. We'll look at uh, the kingdom of God and the gospel, keeping the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ at the center of the gospel and the power of the gospel. As uh, St. James, we need to continue and keep learning about the gospel because the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't just embody the gospel, he spoke about the gospel. When he spoke about the gospel to the disciples or the crowd near the Sea of Galilee, at times he, he spoke um, uh, in a way, speaking gospel, kingdom language he was using. What we learn from reading the Bible is that when Jesus was speaking or teaching or explaining about the gospel, he was saying about a, a new administration he wanted to establish, a radical way of life, a new way of thinking. See, what we see Jesus doing in teaching is saying, I've come to bring in a, a new revolution. What he's saying is that I've come to bring in a new kingdom that is going to replace the old kingdom. We hear it, don't we? In Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 15, when Jesus just read, said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. It's come near. It's here. It's arrived. See, when we come to understand what Jesus is saying about this new kingdom, this new way of life, then you'll realize that every other kingdom on earth is just a power reflection or inferior to God's kingdom. See, in a way, as we look at the, the kingdom of God here, he's speaking about, in a way, a radical revolution, a life-changing administration because of his pattern and thus the product the product of this kingdom is so utterly different so in a way uh, the question what I want to ask tonight and I, I want you to end, answer at the end is are you a part of and do you want to become a part of this new revolution it's new kingdom what Jesus is speaking about a kingdom which is shaped by humility and not pride, shaped by weakness and not strength. See, what I'm saying in a way is that do you want to become one of Jesus' new activists? If you're here tonight, and it may be, so I'm, I'm really new in a way, but you may be here, you're, you're trying to work out what's this Christian thing about, like that kingdom, gospel, language, and you're trying to just connect it all, connect all the dots, I really hope as we go through the next three weeks, it will do this. It will help, help you to connect the dots about the gospel. And for us who are St. James Muswell Hill Christians, I hope that in looking at the kingdom, at the gospel, is that, is, is that we'll see Jesus. Is that we'll see him. That's what we gather for. Is that we'll see him and love him. And that we'll further adore him. Okay, where, where do we start? Uh, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is what is something that Jesus absolutely continually, look at the Bible, he spoke about. It's a theme that runs throughout the whole Bible and it's been helpfully explained as this is that the kingdom of God is God's reign through God's people through, over God's place. God's reign through God's people over God's place. 
It's where we'll be spending the duration of our time looking at God's reign because in a way, it, it sets a foundation. See, God's reign is a, a word, when we hear reign or kingdom, we can easily think about uh, land or a geographical location. But when Jesus uses the word, the kingdom of God, it's more about kingship than kingdom. It's about God's kingly, his king, his kingly rule and not land. It's about his authority, his saving rule over his people. And when I say people, of course God rules over everyone because there's not one inch of the universe that is independent of God's reign. But still, when I speak about the kingdom of God in relation, in a way, to his people, it's about his rule over the church, over Christians. Listen to uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 to 14. It says this, Apostle Paul speaking. He says, For he, Jesus, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Do you see that? It's a, it's a, a redemptive rule. And to redeem, it means to, it means to buy back something that we, that we love, something that was really, really precious to us, to redeem it. God's redemption is an absolute loving act. God's reign is seen in his authority where he has saved and he has redeemed people through the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. See, first and foremost, when we say uh, the word kingdom, it's a statement. He's God. He reigns. He's a powerful king over his kingdom. He's a king that he reigns not through tyranny or, or torture, but this God of the Bible, he reigns through a humble and a, a sacrificial son who at his crucifixion, what did he say? He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. See, the kingdom of God, as we learn about it, it can easily be explained as uh, God's kingship that he reigns, that he's the king of his kingdom. See, God's reign through Jesus Christ, for those who will accept him and love him, is, is one of, of, of God pardoning. It's, it's one of God using Jesus to forgive people. How does that him, what we, what we sing, what we love before the throne of God, because a sinless saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God, the just, is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. To look on him and pardon me. In Greg Gilbert's book, he mentioned that the, the kingdom of God is, is realised and experienced right now. Because when Jesus says that uh, the kingdom of God has come, what he's saying is that the kingdom of God has arrived. It's arrived right now in him. This Nazarene carpenter turned teacher inaugurated the kingdom of God by proclaiming the kingdom of God and by powerfully displaying the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. But Greg's point is, even though we... We, we witness this kingdom power, even though we experience it through uh, the mission of the church, through the word of God being preached by people coming to faith in Jesus. Praise God for what he's doing. But still, the kingdom of God is, is not completed, and it never will be completed until we see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. It wasn't God's plan to fully and finally establish a kingdom on earth. However, the Bible says, says 
is that there will be a day when the kingdom will be finalised, when it will fully arise. See, as believers, our great hope, and guess what, the thing that we should absolutely long for as Christians, what should be our strength and our confidence, despite the troubles that we face day to day, is the day when the Lord Jesus Christ will part the skies and guess what the Bible said? My Bible says, our Bible says, is that he will return in splendour and he will return in glory. It will be the culmination of the kingdom of God. It will be a glorious moment when everything, imagine what life is like, everything in the world will be quiet, where justice will finally be done, where evil will be overthrown where righteousness will truly be known. In Isaiah 65, verse 19, it says, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall there be heard in it the sound of weeping and a cry of distress. See, I know that is absolutely unprecedented times, isn't it? As we, as we still, in a way, continue to come out of the coronavirus situation. Let alone the, the global racial tensions which have been thrown up by the death of George Floyd. However, do, do you understand what Isaiah 65 means? What it's saying for us? The implications for us tonight See, God intends to create in his people, in us, in St. James, Muswell Hill, and for those who tonight will come and accept Jesus, a new world where there be no more bullying, there be no more trolling on the, on the internet, there be no more racism, no more sin, no more division, and no more death. See, surely our response as we look at, at the kingdom and this king and this new world is faithful obedience. Isn't it a deeper allegiance to the one who was now to the tree so that we can safely climb down from the branch. God reigns and he reigns for his people. <laughs> Let's look. That is in fact his plan from absolutely beginning. I say this because we were looking at it in the mornings. In the book of Genesis, we see Adam and Eve were commissioned to be God's um, royal representatives. They were called to steward his creation, to spread the blessing all over the earth of the reign of God. However, instead of fulfilling this role, they chose to, to seek their own glory, didn't they? Instead of God, apart from God. See, their rebellion, it fractured this relationship with God and his creation. And ever since then, in a way, let's call it God's kingdom plan. It's been a, a, a rescue mission, drawing us back into this glorious kingdom. See, God's reign is a saving reign. It's a, it's a redeeming reign. It's important to remember, even though that uh, God is using us and Christians as, a, uh, as Christians and the church, but we'll never ever be the hero of the story. Never be the hero. God is using the church to do great things, but we're not the hero to bring about his kingdom. See, it's only Lord Jesus Christ that can progress God's kingdom. He's the hero. In fact, while we're thinking about the king in his kingdom, then it must mean logically is that everyone here tonight 
is under the reign of this king. If there's a king, and there's a kingdom, and there must be subjects for the king to reign over. Therefore, the, the, the logic must go that either you're a citizen of the kingdom or you're the enemy of a king because you rebelled against the king. See, regarding what side of the wall you fall, because this king doesn't let Humpty Dumpty sit on a wall. The way that you are living your life means that you are making a choice to either follow the king or reject the king. How does that king's, uh, kid's nursery rhyme go? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. What side of the wall do you fall on? God's reign on earth is all about the Lord Jesus Christ because of his great love for us putting us back together again. Humpty Dumpty sat in a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. But thankfully for Humpty Dumpty, there was a king on a cross with nails for his hands who ushered in a kingdom what wasn't about land. Gasping for breath in agony and pain, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, died on a cross to put us back together again. That's the gospel. That's how God is rewriting Humpty Dumpty for all of us, putting us back together again. I know that until Christ returns, that we will continuously fall in temptation and sin. But still, the king of this kingdom, if I read my Bible, he says we are to live lives worthy of the kingdom that which he has called us. 1 Thessalonians 2. We are to shine like stars in this crooked and depraved generation. Philippians chapter 2. And that shining like stars is primarily to be worked out within the local church. Yes, the church. Within St. James, Muswell Hill, the church, the body of Christ. You may feel that you, you just don't have much to offer the church. Or, or, or you're busy, or I just, say, I just don't have the gifts in a way to contribute or, and, 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 and serve. I just don't. It's just not me. I wish I did. I wish God just gifted me a little bit more. I just want to, but I can't. But if you ponder at how God's reign is worked out through the church, and that's all ages. If you're an adult, if you're a parent or, or, or you're single, if you're young or old, or if you've got a, a disability, then you will see how important the church is, how important your role is within the church. I know that no church is perfect. Churches unintentionally make mistakes. Guess what? As Christians, if you're like me, we make mistakes. So it's important for us to always be patient with the church and pray for the church, pray for its leadership. The church is where God has decided that the kingdom of God is to be lived out and showcased to the watching world. Our communities, our loved ones, our families, our neighbours who so desperately need the gospel. Our love for each other should be evidence that the gospel is at work, that it's real and effective. It's how God showcases the church to the world. It's really important that we are really intentional the way that we care for each other, the way that we love each other. All of us have such an important role to play in God's revolution. God's reign 
for God's people and for God's place. As we conclude, let's look at God's place. Where in the Bible, in a way, it's about a, a gracious God taking his creation into a glorious kingdom. That's what the Bible is. See, many Christians today think is that God's plan is for us to uh, uh, leave earth, earth, earth and go to heaven. But the mess of the kingdom is not an escape from earth to heaven, but it's God's reign coming down, down from heaven to earth. See, the focus of God's reign is, is our hearts, his people, and the destination is a new creation. Someone said this, is, is the Bible is a, a rescue story, not about God rescuing sinners from a broken creation, but him rescuing us, guess what, where we're going, to the new creation. God's reign, it starts in our hearts, but one day, guess what, it's going to extend to the ends of the earth. And it's a, it's a kingdom that Jesus lovingly calls us to, to enter, not through strength, but through weakness. Through foregoing your reputation so you can experience something, what the Bible calls God's salvation. See, as a church, God has called us to no higher commitment and responsibility to him, each other, and the world. That's why we should be praying about passion for life next year. How can I use my gifts, me, to serve the church and let people know about this glorious, glorious kingdom See, God has raised Jesus Christ from death so that we can be rescued, us, be rescued from the sentence of death. See, we have such a message for the world, for the world a glorious, glorious message. At the beginning, I asked you to answer the question in your hearts. Do you want to be a part of, or are you part of this, of this new revolution, of this new kingdom and I do hope that as we have looked at Greg Gilbert's book as a background, we have seen how absolutely amazing this kingdom is. And that you further glance, a glimpse, at the king of this kingdom. Do you realize, do you really get what Jesus has done for you? In Isaiah, Chapter 3, verse 7, it reads this. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. See, it's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ going to the cross for me and you. Jesus was stripped of absolutely everything so that we could be filled. We could know and be filled with forgiveness and mercy because at the cross, Jesus Christ, was, he was filled with sin. We, we know God's mercy because at the cross, Jesus, he didn't get no mercy, not from Pilate and certainly not the crowd. Tell me, as you read your Bible, just read it and look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anyone more loyal to you than the Lord Jesus Christ? Is there anyone more focused and single-minded in the way that he went to the cross in Jesus? Is there anyone? Why is it one that one day... Just imagine how profound that is. 
is that one day we will see God and know him face to face it's because Jesus Christ, he died in the dark and we couldn't see him. Why is it that one day and now is that we can call God our Father? It's because Jesus Christ on the cross said, where are you, Father? The kingdom of God is about a glorious, glorious king. God's reign through God's place, through God's people, over God's place, is about a glorious kingdom to kingdom. And this king, he deserves our allegiance. Let me pray. Father God, I thank you that you, you do reign. Father, thank you that your kingdom is not about land or location. It's about the reign of God. It's about uh, taking your creation to a glorious kingdom. And Father, we thank you that you do reign for your church, us. And Father, we um, pray that you would make us love and adore the Lord Jesus Christ day by day and week by week and you'd use us for the extension of your kingdom. Father, we are not the heroes, but Father, give us uh, boldness to proclaim the hero. And Father, we thank you that you are bringing heaven down to earth. And that one day is that we can, in a way, enjoy the culmination of your kingdom, of the new heavens and the new earth, where we stand around and worship the Lamb. Amen.